Greetings folks, this is Ron Wise Gadget and welcome to the D20 system development vlog. In this video, I'll show you how you can make your own classes in the D20 system. As I mentioned in a previous video titled The Elegance of Class Dice, each class in D20 represents a role, an archetype, a skill set, or something to that effect. The idea of the class dice mechanic was simple. If the action your character is taken uh, falls within the iconic theme that a class is known for, add the class die to the action test if you have it. If, however, the action is peripheral or tangential to the iconic theme that a class is known for, add that class's half die to the action test if you have it, and if it's higher than the class die of the class whose theme would match that action. Through the development of D20, however, the issue of what was a particular class's theme popped up multiple times. At first, I thought the name of the class would make it obvious. That's how it works in Rissus, the Anything RPG. However, this was something that I thought needed more clarity from me as the creator of D20. When I was playtesting the pressure system from the JFace Games YouTube channel, I saw how he arranged his char uh, character stats as a striker, defender, controller, leader, and magic, if I recall correctly. Each stat was a role, akin to those spelled out in Dungeons & Dragons 4th Edition. This aspect of D&D 4th Edition's roles was something already running through my mind, but something clicked during the playtest. Rather than having each of these roles, or classes, in the case of D20, each of those traits are the possible functions of a class. That's when I got to work in going through each of the sample classes I've included in D20 and specifically spelled out the following functions. Striking. What are the thematic ways in which this class deals damage in combat? Defending. What are the thematic ways in which this class mitigates or avoids damage in combat? Supporting. What are the thematic ways in which this class provides bonus dice and narrative opportunities to care to the character or their allies. Imposing. What are the thematic ways in which this class imposes a penalty die and narrative restrictions to their foes? Accomplishing. What are the iconic things that this class is known for that don't fall under the other functions? And knowing. What iconic subject matter is this class known for knowing? Laying out a class's functions in this manner was key to spelling out what the class was known for. That's not the whole thing, however, as I also had to account for what I call their partial crossover functions, the things that the class had some familiarity with but wasn't in their wheelhouse. Fortunately, I had most of the work done for me, as I had spelled out the six functions of a class. For the most part, when it comes to partial crossover functions, they were simply activities that supported or were tangential to the class's thematic functions. When I had to specify them, however, that's just what I did. So here's how I designed two sample D20 classes in this matter, the Curse Bringer and the Face. So <clears throat> the Curse Bringer is... Uh, it's think of like a warlock, a witch, a sorcerer, or a particular a pra practitioner of black magic. Their thing is they put curses on people. <laughs> and so uh, for their class themed functions, here's how I broke them down. Uh, for striking, uh, their class themed yeah, their class themed striking functions are attacking those associated with the dark arts with a proper implement, fetish, or ritual. Uh, their class themed ways of defending is to defend against the dark arts via the use of a proper implement, fetish, or ritual. Uh, the way that uh, they provide uh, support within the theme of their class is that they gain or grant advantages and or narrative opportunities in ways you know, via the dark arts. And the same goes for imposing. You know, they impose or restrict their enemies through the use of the dark arts. As far as like what they can accomplish outside of the other 
that's different from the other functions. You know, stuff like communicating with malevolent spirits, demons, devils, etc. And as far as what their, I, what um, what's iconic for them to know, you know the dark arts and malevolent spirits, demons, devils, etc. And their habitats. Now, when it comes to the partial crossover functions of the Cursebringer, uh, when it comes to striking, when they need to, you know, they can manifest, influence, or force malevolent spirits to attack living corporeal objects, uh, opponents. Excuse me. Uh, for defending, uh, when they need to, you know, they can quickly summon a malevolent, a malevolent spirit to spook, obfuscate, or otherwise mess with an attacker within their line of sight up to one zone away. That's approximately like 40 feet. Uh, as far as um, the supporting function is concerned, the partial crossover would be peripheral activities that lead to gaining or granting advantages and narrative opportunities uh, via the dark arts. Um, and then the same thing for imposing, except that instead of providing advantages, they uh, they impede or restrict their enemies. It, it's a peripheral activities that lead to that. And then as far as like the, the accomplishing part is concerned, same thing, peripheral activities that lead to communicating with entities of darkness. Um, as far as like what the um, what's considered partial crossover for their knowing function it's peripheral stuff related to the dark arts and entities of darkness now you know just mentioning it like that it still may leave like some ambiguity uh, but that's something that each GM should deal with you know, at their own table because when the game comes to your table it, it's your world, it's not mine. So that's the curse bringer. The other class I want to talk about is the face. Now, uh, the face are folks that you want when a deal needs to go down and when doors need to be opened, socially that is. So whether they can play a mean flute, storm a mean lute, or do anything else but be mute, <laughs> the face can talk the talk. Um, now, regarding the FACES class-themed functions, as far as striking and defending are concerned, none. FACES are not known for getting into fights or defending themselves when they're in a fight. Uh, when it comes to um, the class-themed supporting functions, it's stuff like boosting morale, alleviating psychological blocks, and leading others. And when it comes to the imposing function, they are known for demoralizing others, intimidation, and taunting. Um, when it comes to the accomplishing function, like the other stuff besides everything else, it's basically getting other people to do what they want. And then as far as like what they're specialized in knowing, that falls under like what motivates people, who's who in their predominant culture, and who can get uh, who can get you what others want or who can get them what others want so then we go to the partial crossover functions for striking it's still none you know so like if you want a class that can help in a fight the face is not it uh, when it comes to defending however and they when they need to they can like move out of the way of rolling boulders and other big slow moving area attacks you know think of like indiana jones while they're unencumbered or like if there's cover that's like right by them that's at least waist high they can jump in it they're not great at it but they can do that if need be with their face class die uh, regarding partial crossover supporting roles it's peripheral activities that lead to boosting morale, alleviating psychological blocks, and leading others. And it's the same idea when it goes for uh, imposing, uh, accomplishing, 
and the knowing functions. It's peripheral activities that lead to them doing the thing that they do. And now you know how I put together these classes in a hopefully comprehensible manner. This is how you make your own classes in D20. If you like or dislike anything you've seen in this video, please give it a like or a dislike and leave a comment. Subscribe if you want to support my channel, and if you really want to support my endeavors, head over to my Patreon and become an appreciated trooper. The link is in the description. Until then, folks, take care and play to find out what happens.